Organizers, welcome to this level two video. This is Secret, my two-year-old thoroughbred. So I'm gonna be doing the groundwork with her. I'm gonna show you guys level two for the building confidence and groundwork. Because she's two, I'm not gonna be riding her. And when you do the patterns for the student levels for the virtual show, or if you're just doing the student levels, you have the option to do the groundwork piece only, or you can do the riding test as well is optional. So if Secret was my only horse, I would just do it all groundwork. But because I have other horses that I can ride, I'm gonna end up riding Alicia for the level two part. And sometimes that happens with people. You've got horses that you do groundwork with, but you don't ride them for whatever reason. Maybe you're working with mini horses, or maybe you have a reason that you can't ride. And so that's totally okay. So when I go to do these patterns, a couple little things to know is I'm doing this video to kind of show you guys what level two looks like, what we're looking for, give you guys some tips and pointers along the way. If you're doing your levels, you can either do them as part of the horse show and have the opportunity to earn extra prizes, or you can do them just on their own as the student levels and submit them separately. They're really good because it helps to give you goals and kind of show you what the next steps are. So you finish level one, you take a look at what level two is, finish level two and then it shows you what's next for level three so it gives you it gives you goals gives you a focus which is just really nice to kind of keep things progressing with your horse I'm doing my levels so that way I can legitimately earn my level stuff every single student level has its own swag that is exclusive for the level only um, secrets having some good yawns there so if you earn 80% or more in all of your tests, so your groundwork, your building confidence, and your online quiz, so there's a little horse knowledge multiple choice quiz that goes with each level, because we don't want just people knowing how to work with their horses, we want people to understand the difference between, you know, mare versus gelding, or know when to call a vet. So it's very kind of common, basic horse knowledge that's in these level quizzes, and is one little part to the, the whole piece as well. So it's a different quiz for each level. So I'm gonna be going through with Secret. And as we go into our pattern, there is one mark which is for your horsemanship, which is kind of the overall presentation of you and your horse. So if your horse is covered in a ton of cuts and is bloody or it has like a really tangled up mane or tail, you're gonna be scored lower. Likewise, if you don't look very professional, if you didn't bother to present yourself very well, then that will cause you to have a lower score as well. So if I went out like this for the horse show, I would not get the perfect five wow score. I'm in a tank top, which is not super professional. If you're doing a competition, you would wanna be in a collared shirt. I've got a treat pouch, which is totally okay. I've got gloves, which is totally up to you. However, these are gardening gloves. They aren't um, professional horse gloves. Not to say that you have to have everything top of the line, but you do want to make an effort to be coordinated. So the fact that I've got blue gloves and a pink shirt and my, like it's just not very all meshing together. If you want that wow, five out of five mark for your horsemanship presentation skills, then you want you and your horse kind of meshing together, looking really professional. It doesn't mean you have to uh, braid your horse or band your horse's mane, but you want them looking really professional, really well put together. My horse is brushed and she doesn't have any knots or anything in her mane. Uh, I could have gone a little above and beyond if I wanted to braid or band, but my horse looks like acceptable. I'm using the fusion halter, which is an acceptable piece of tack. You just wouldn't want to use a halter with a chain over the nose or something uh, kind of aggressive like that. Instead, you'd want to use kind of a normal halter or a fusion halter or a rope halter. Any of that would be fine. So that gives you guys some tips. Now let's take a look at our level two. I'm gonna be doing the pattern just on my first time, going through and kind of telling you what's good, what's not good, giving you some pointers. Keep in mind, if you guys are submitting your own level two videos, you can refilm stuff. So you can film it, and if you didn't like how it goes, you can refilm over and over again. But let's take a look at level two with Secret. We are going to start with the building confidence pattern. So this is the building confidence pattern where we're going to walk and halt over the pole. And these are the test A. So these are the A patterns, the A tests. 
And all of the tasks are generally the same. They might change in terms of a 180 turn versus a 360, but the things that you're asked to do are the same in the test. So halting over a pole, and then now this is stopping with an object on my horse's right side. And basically for this building confidence pattern is we want to see a mix of the horse being able to go over things, like touch things, and be able to stand beside things and not be bothered by things at their side. Uh, so here I was going to put the object on her right side and then I remembered that I had to put it on her left side. So I would still get a passing mark for something like that, but I wouldn't get a wow five mark for being super smooth. And then we're going to come and do a change of direction and do a circle to the left. And then this time it's a, a touch object. So we're, we're walking over a little Liverpool, which technically my horse did not touch. So that particular object... Uh, would not score a wow mark. My horse went over it with no problem, but didn't technically uh, touch it. And then it was a go-between, and then this is touching a little deer thing there. And as long as the judges feel like they can zoom in and see what you're doing, the footage is fine. If, it, if they feel it's too far away, you might get asked to refilm a certain piece if they feel like they couldn't clearly see something. And then here we're going to rub uh, the horse's face all over, showing that we can touch the ears, the eyes, all that kind of stuff, and not be bothered by that, which she's doing super well. So little things that you want to be careful of. See how there's a jump standard in the frame on the left there? So little things like that can cause your camera to be focusing on the jump standards and can make you be out of focus. Uh, now I'm just doing the last part there where I'm lifting the horse's tail and showing that that's... Uh, okay and comfortable for my horse. So when you are filming for your levels, kind of think about where that camera is being placed and try not to be too far away from all of the action so that way you can see. This one was a little bit far away. Now you can't be zooming in and out all the time unless you do it really smoothly. Here we're going to start the groundwork pattern. So I'm starting with a haunch turn. So here's another example of see how there's the barrel and the jump and everything all in the frame there. So what happens is the camera kind of focuses on all that stuff and even though you can see me in the distance, if all that stuff wasn't there it would make it so much easier to see what I'm doing and you'd be able to zoom in and be all in focus. So that was a haunch turn and then into the sideways, which you want to try to make sure your horse is straight if you want to get that wow five mark for your sideways. And then now we're going into the boomerang where you send the horse around and you want them to be trotting to you as they come around the object. So you can see I sent her out and then she came back in and that part was all all well and fine. So then we do some trotting and we're doing the S pattern changes of directions. So we want to show some trot. It's okay if your horse does some walking in the pattern, but you want to show that you can do, that you're starting to build up that trot into that pattern. So then here as we come in, we're going to be sending the horse to the left first. And what we're looking for in this is it says a half circle of walk, a full circle of trot, and then a half circle of walk to show the uh, transitions. So trying to look, if you wanna get that wow mark of five, you wanna be pretty precise with your transitions. So if you use the hydro pole that's in the background as kind of a marker for the transitions, you can see that that was a little bit more than a full circle of trot and uh, the half circle there was totally fine and then it's a change of direction. So technically the half circle would start there and we would wanna see trotting by the hydro pole, which she did pretty well there and then ideally would walk again as she's passing that big hydro pole, but you can see she's a little late on the transition. So it'd still be a passing grade. We're still doing everything correctly, softly, but uh, it's not as precise. The timing isn't as precise as it could be, so it wouldn't score that five. So then we draw her in towards to finish that particular uh, exercise there and then it's lifting each horse's front foot and asking them to put their foot down and you might think this is a weird task why is this in here well we do it in level two because we're building up to eventually teaching the horse how to bow which comes up on one of the higher levels but it starts with being able to put your horse's nose down and pick up the foot at the same time so we did each foot individually she put her head down nicely for each one and 
uh, looked very soft through that so that would so score really really well and I am a little bit far out in the footage you can zoom in and zoom out the only thing is it can't be the choppy in and out some cameras depending on how you zoom them in and out it can almost look like the footage is stopping and starting again so it has to be smooth if you're going to do that so then we were making the the square turn and then trotting together and so same thing here I'm going into my haunch trim but you can see there's a whole big pile of jump standards in the way and then I go into my sideways so depending on if the judge felt like they could see what you were doing enough they may ask you to refilm that particular maneuver but an easier thing to do would be to just move all of the jump standards out of the way or maybe this camera could have been placed over on the other side where the hydro pole is and maybe there wouldn't be all the same stuff in the way so really think about that camera placement before you start filming because you can see how that can be a little bit challenging to see what's going on. So here we are doing our little backup after we've taken our halter off. And now we're going forwards and practicing our transitions with the halt transition. And then now uh, doing a ground tie where we walk around the horse and you want to be at least five feet away from your horse to show that you don't need to touch them as you're walking around them and then walking uh, together she had to stop and get her little itch there so we're doing the halt transition and then walking we're going to walk again so that wouldn't score a five because there was a little bit of a hesitation there and then we went forward together, but it would still be a pass and score well. And then we finish with doing the boomerang, which is where you send them around the cone. So we'll do that here for our last maneuver and doing it at the walk is completely okay for the level two pattern. You don't have to show trotting at liberty in your level two. And you can see she does that really well. So that wraps up the groundwork pattern with Secret, which she did really, really nicely. And I just wanted to show you the uh, circle pattern again, but better timing using that hydro pole. So I'm using that hydro pole to start the trot circle, and then I'm going to try to make the transition right at the hydro pole to get the walk and then a half circle which finishes at the other side of the hydro pole make my change of direction so now the half circle of walk is started and then at the hydro pole she should trot and when she reaches the hydro pole again she should walk and do that half circle so if you want to get that wow five mark uh, that's just how you can clean it up a little bit and be a bit more precise in your timing be a little bit more accurate for the things that you're being asked to do just kind of depends if you're doing it for your student level so that way you're just getting the 80 percent or above pass then it doesn't necessarily matter but if you're trying to win a virtual show then you want to get that so now we're doing the riding pattern with alicia so we're starting with the uh, trot and making the left turn the left square turn which is showing that you can make a, a turn using the one ring and now we've picked up our cup of water and for level two you're just riding a circle at the walk and then putting your cup down and this is to show that you can have some awareness of steady hands so that way you can hold something be steady and smooth and also ride your horse with the one hand as well as you're doing that so I'm going to make my turn so I can come out and trot away from where I've got my cup of water make a square turn now to the right because we just did a one to the left if you notice closely, she actually did kind of a half step of walk in there and we were supposed to trot the whole thing. So that would score us a little bit lower. We wouldn't get that wow five mark because of that. And then here we're doing our little uh, changes of direction, the little S pattern, changes of direction there. And then we're coming up into our trot and we're making our uh, trot circle that you can see we did our big trot circle there and really what we're looking here is for smoothness as we're going through level two is about safety it's that steering control piece now we're riding the trot circle to the left after we did the change of direction through the walk 
So the horse doesn't necessarily have to be bending or collected beautifully in frame type of thing. We're looking to see that the rider isn't bouncing around all over the place, that the hands are relatively steady, and that it's smooth. Here we're doing the stop and the turnaround into the backup. So it's a backup between the two cones. So again, we're looking to see that there's some awareness of how to move your horse around so you can position them to back between those markers and that it's soft with your horse doing those um, patterns. Then uh, asking her to turn around again. And so now we're gonna run into that issue again where the jump standards kind of get a little bit in the way, but that was the emergency stop there on the left. So the one rain stop. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, the level two.